world, my name is Rihanna Dillon and we are coming live from London with the cast and director of The Kid Who Would Be King. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. So today on the sofa, we have got Louis Ashbon Circus, Rihanna Doris, Tom Taylor, Dean Shamu, and of course, director Joe Cornish. How are you guys all doing? Good. Good. Yeah? Amazing. Good. Good, excellent, that's what I like to hear. So you're here to talk about The Kid Who Would Be King, um, which is like this all action, modern take on the incredible myth of King Arthur. So perhaps Joe, you could lead with telling us what your modern take is all about. Well, the movie's called The Kid Who Would Be King. It's about an ordinary boy, that one there, <laughs> Louis Ashbon Circus, who discovers the most extraordinary sword in history, Excalibur. So it's using kind of the most famous elements of the Arthurian myth, but bringing them into modern modernity. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I find King Arthur films sometimes a little bit boring. Bit heavy. Bit heavy. So this yeah. is not one of those films. It's very it's modern, very contemporary, very fresh, young cast, all set in the modern world, but bringing those famous elements of the narrative and all the medieval monsters and villainy into contemporary Britain. And it is an incredible role, Louis, for you playing Alex, um, who holds the power of the sword. So tell us about auditioning for this. What was that like? What did you have to do? Well, actually, my first audition, I, I got a call from my mum and um, she said, come on quick. I was actually in my school uniform. Um, so I rushed home, uh, got in a car and went to a screen test with these people. Oh, really? And, um, Wait, were you one of the last to be cast? Um, I think so. Yes, I think <laughs> you were, yeah. Um, oh. And then, so I, was, I got handed a script with these people and then I just did this did the scene and, and well, which scene can you remember what you had to do it was well there was like a car scene when when we were on our adventure and it was with all four of us mm -hmm. um and then I had to do some improvisation with Angus mm -hmm. who's, who's Merlin yeah and then I did a scene with Bedders um so Dean and then and then that was it and then I had one more audition later on um with Joe no, um, yeah, yeah. Nailed it, apparently. Um, so, Dean, I heard that you made everybody cry at your audition. Yeah. Tell me about this. What did you do? Kick them in the shins? What happened? <laughs> no, well, there was this monologue from Stand By Me. Um, I forgot the character's name, but he's talking about how he didn't steal this milk money. And I just felt really in the moment, I felt his feelings. So yeah. just let it happen. Oh, my God. Did you look up and everyone was just sort of... Yeah. What were you thinking? Like, oh God. I was a bit scared at first. I was thinking, <laughs> what happened? Did I just mess this thing up? But then Joe came and he hugged me and I felt very happy. With oh, myself. that's so lovely. <laughs> and Rihanna, yours and Tom's characters have like quite a personality overhaul throughout this kind of entire thing where you go from being bullies to heroes. What was your first impression of Kay in the script? I think my first impression of Kay was, um, I definitely thought she was a tough character, a mm -hmm. strong character. And it did take me a while to understand her emotional progression throughout the whole film. Uh -huh. So I was lucky enough to have a one-on-one -on -one with Joe himself um, during the training and rehearsal period before mm -hmm. the shoot. And we just sat down and went through every scene that Kay was involved in. And we really just talked about her as a character and where she stood um, in the story and how she fit in. And yeah, everything was cleared up after that. Um, and Tom, we've seen you sort of play quite a sweet kid at some points in Dr. Foster before. Was it really nice to sort of be able to let her rip as the nasty one in this? Well, yeah, that's what I really liked about Lance because all the other characters I'd played were really sensitive and Lance is <laughs> just f like seeing the script and how mean and not spiteful he was. It was just really fun to play that kind of character but also later on go back to that kind of sensitive person again. It's like a nice arc. <laughs> it's, a no it's a great arc. Um, I think we should actually have a little look at the trailer and see what we're talking about. <laughs> that was so brilliant. It's so much fun, this film. That's what I love about it. Um, so you all had to learn how to ride horses and use swords, but then also you're supposed to be kids in it, so you kind of have to keep in the imperfections as well. How did you balance that? Well, when you're like doing sword fighting, it's, it's important to make it look real mm -hmm. so we had um different ranges of swords from like normal metal ones to, like real ones to like fake plastic ones and before we would do a shot we'd be given uh, the real metal sword um to feel how heavy it was and then we'd be given a, met a plastic one which we'd actually fight with so getting that balance of making it real and making it safe was was hard but it worked out 
Um, and Joe, did you go into schools to kind of find out how, how kids speak these days? Is that what happened? I did some research before we wrote the script. I went around right. schools and we talked about the myth of the sword in the stone to see what young people knew about it. Mm -hmm. So we could calibrate the film so that kids understood it. And that was really interesting. They understood what the sword in the stone was. Most of them had seen the Disney movie or the BBC Merlin. They understood it a bit like Thor's hammer, that it was a sort of totemistic thing that gave you great power. But then when it talked about the royal side of it, they didn't, that got them kind of confused and amused. Okay. It was like, well, there's already a royal family. <laughs> and if a normal kid drew it, then in what way would that kid be royal? In what way would they be allowed to be a leader? Uh, so that was really part of the inspiration for the culture clash at the centre of the story. That line makes it into the film as well, doesn't it? About the... There's already a king. Yeah, yeah I think it does. Does it? Like there's already, a, I think, Tom yeah, that, says yeah, it. That's well. right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's very, very good. Um, so we have to mention that one of your co-stars is the legendary Patrick Stewart. Um, did you have to pinch yourself like being on screen with, I mean, Professor X? It's incredible. Rihanna, you were like a huge fan of X-Men. Yeah, I'm, I'm a geek for like all that type of stuff. <laughs> so it was it was crazy to be sharing a screen with Sir Pat. But we had to be professional <laughs> and just work with it. But he, he was so sweet. He never made us feel less professional than him. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, he was just really wise and fun to work with. And also Rebecca, Rebecca Ferguson co-stars, and she said that she was partly inspired by Cruella de Vil for her role. Did you have any sort of action heroes or heroines in mind when you were battling these fiery demons, Dean? Well, for me, I think this might seem a bit weird, but I think Hermione in Harry Potter, mm -hmm. because I think she, she shares a bit of the similar characters to Bed as, as in the education side, her focus with this. Yeah. And so I thought, but has had this more logical mind on how to fight these demons mm -hmm. in his head. That's a really nice answer. I like that. What about you, Tom? Um, mythological demons, kind of, I guess. Like, when you see Morgana, she's become this, like, big dragon woman. And, then, yeah, <laughs> demons and stuff. <laughs> um, so, Joe, you wrote and uh, directed Attack the Block in 2010. What is it about kids saving the world that you love? Well, I think the world about. needs saving, uh -huh. and my generation ain't going to do it. <laughs> so I think the younger generation has to do it right. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I, I get a little bit Whitney Houston about this. <laughs> I believe that children are the future. And uh, I like to make movies that are positive and optimistic and mm -hmm. upbeat. And I like to make movies for young people because that was when I really fell in love with cinema. When yeah. I was a kid, I was able to see movies starring young people like mm -hmm. me and live action movies that have sort of vanished a bit from cinema. Most kids' movies are animation, usually based on a toy brand or a superhero, mm -hmm. or they're live-action superhero movies. They used to be more different sorts of movies for kids, especially movies, live-action movies with kids in them. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to try and bring back, but not a nostalgia fest. It's not set in the 80s, it's not a retro movie. It's very contemporary, very modern, mm -hmm. you know, speaking directly to modern kids. Um, forgotten what the question was now but <laughs> you answer. answered it okay. um what is joe like as a director terrible yeah that's what i figured <laughs> no it's really good to work with joe and he, yeah. he talked to us like adults so mm -hmm. he could really communicate with us and if he had to get a point across he wouldn't talk down to us and he knew how to talk to us mm -hmm. despite being six foot three <laughs> i did not talk down to them um joe finally in three words how would you sum up the kid who would be king very good film. <laughs> go see now. Do go and see it now. See in cinema. It is. So the, the kid who would be king. video. No. S do people still have video? Okay. No. Enough. That's, that's, that's millions of words. But it is in cinemas, 15th of February. Please go and see it. It's absolutely fantastic. We're back at 12.30 with Edith Bowman talking all things BAFTAs. But please, for now, give it up for Joe Cornish and the cast of The Kid Who Would Be King. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah.